Me and Celia Fondross is here today to talk to Mr. Esperion. I work for America right now. So, Mr. Esperion, what really happened in that yard? Do you really want to know, dear? Yes, sir. Well, I shall start with the five, my bad, the six researchers that they sent into the yard to the death. Hmm, so let's get this started. So the first body that little Pete came upon was a man named A. Miller. Or maybe a woman. I don't really know. He didn't really give me that information. But I guess A. Miller wanted to be a lawyer if he was to get out of this situation and help clean up all those loose ends for Omniant. Uh, at least it came more clear to him why they chose him. A gaggle of heads with historic knowledge of what we are meant to encounter. And him, himself, to keep track of all the question of activity. Uh, they also sent an ex-military macho man to guide them through the unforgiven Austral territory. Oh, and that scary intern who had talked to Yance. Let's not forget how A. Miller died. I guess he was trying to spy on Wendell's activities and end up climbing onto an outlet and end up slipping and falling to his death. Well, I guess that's how bones break. The next person in the research team was a name, a man named Big D. He was special forces. He was pretty much volunteered by his commander to go for a normal mission. Babysit eggheads, establish ground base, do some light recon, lay ground work for the orcs operation, don't spill the beans, and don't make contact. Simple enough, right? No. The truth is that wilderness is a hostile backyard. Packed with monsters and crazy experiments. No one wants to work together. And some tall giant kid with a mole that keeps stomping around the base. Oh, and small arms. And light weapons don't work on this scale either. Big D eventually met his demise when he was caught in an explosion underground. He just wanted to tell his mama that he loves her and he'll miss her. The next member on the list of of the expedition was a person named J.K. J.K. was an articultural entomologist. And J.K. was mad because they all, they, all the group wanted to do was split up and regroup. It wasn't logical at all. J.K. argued that there's a reason why so many insects thrive in colonies. It's to survive, you fools. <laughs> Apparently, J.K. wasn't getting anything done solo. All he did was saw a Java-matic machine and some kid was stomping around the yard around the only place they called home, which is probably their home base. So J.K. decided to make his way west to the barbecue and rustle up some cold chunks. So he can come back to his friends like a caveman. Well, looks like the only thing they got wrestled was him by them instead. <laughs> he ended up getting smashed by the co chunks, I guess, when someone knocked over the barbecue. Poor guy or girl. Who's to know? Who's to say? Well, the f next person on the list, which would be the, I believe, the fourth one so far, is a person named E. Fierra. E.'s profession was a biomedical engineer. He was alive a lot longer than anyone in the group, surprisingly. Well, besides the intern. Uh, he was furious why Omnit wouldn't show them the full picture and question why they sent an intern there with him. Uh... He did this job still, did better than most, took pictures, took notes, and tried to collect tapes that 
Dr. Tully was dropping, even when he was raising it up and withering away. Uh, you're probably wondering what raising it up means. I guess you could say if, you, uh, if you're you over a certain age and you get strength, a uh, certain disease starts happening to you, or maybe an effect. I really don't know what science this is right now. Maybe next time I could talk more about the resonating. But besides that, eventually E got stomped by someone, whether it be Dr. Tully. I mean, he did say he was going after Dr. Tully to meet him in person. Maybe it was his molded kid. Or maybe it was Smector himself. We shall never know. But little P may be able to find out. Hmm. No. I don't got any cool puns with this one. So, um, next on our list. Second to last. The intern, who uh, was supposed to be talking to the ants in the dark in October of 89. He ended up living longer than anyone. A year, in fact, actually. Not much known is about B. Stava, what his uh, occupation was, what he did for a living, why they even sent him into the yard. Poor kid. He ended up withering away by the raisining. It wasn't by bugs or monsters or crazy experience that he died. A year later, he died of the raisining. Gotta respect him for that. Last but probably not least, was a man named D. Spencer, who was a pharmaceutical toxicologist. He was in a pond when he met his demise. I guess he was on a dive before last and saw that there was vegetables that window was growing that looked like Brussels sprouts, and it piqued his interest. So, the next day, I take it, he wanted to get a sample to see if those Brussels sprouts were the cure to the raisining. But that last dive would be his last. <laughs> and as you can see, the lab that caved in around him and drowned him to death. What else can you tell me, Mr. Espinal? Well... Who the hell is this woman? Mom, <laughs> 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 <laughs>